Hello there. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2. That's right. I'm about to monologue, son. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'm just going to talk about the character that stand out to me the most. I mean, it's obviously going to be Severus Snape. Just because this is where his story finally kind of collides into one complete story. Because originally Harry Potter got glimpses of his father in school and realizes that his father wasn't the great man he made him out to be. His father was an immature bully when he was on the grounds. He probably became a better man once he graduated and went out into the real world. But when he was in school, he wasn't the good strong-hearted man that Harry Potter always believed him to be, believed his father to be. And he sees it from Snape's point of view. And this one is just like, you see what kind of man he really was. And I hate it that I keep bringing up the books, but in the books they actually flush it out more about how uh, Lily left Snape entirely. It was the moment he actually referred to her as a mudblood. It was that moment when he those words slipped his mouth and he immediately regretted it is when he had lost her forever. And he realized that. And it became his own mistake, which he had been trying to redeem ever since. Yeah, and I actually preferred that because in the, the way they introduced it in the movie, it just seems like Lily stopped hanging out with her friend and it's just like, that seems rude. That seems rude. But to completely disgrace someone in front of a group of people that could do it that could absolutely do it act as if they're beneath you acting as someone's beneath you not even worth your time yeah lily would stop talking to him entirely lily would leave and you could ask for forgiveness but you would actually have to try and work for it so that's something i actually preferred more in the book it's just like Prove the fact that you slipped. You made a mistake. Because they try to make Snape out to be this this poor, bullied kid. But he was bullied to a point to where he, he let something slip, which he shouldn't have. And I would have preferred that scene. If they could, would have included at least five more minutes to get that in, it would have been you would have felt more sorry for Snape in the long run because he's just a kid who accidentally made a mistake and was never able to to come back from it. He dug himself a hole and just kept digging from then on. He, his, one of those things that is just like a mistake that you feel you want to come back for him, but you don't know how. That he just kept going further and further and further into the wrong direction. Oh, but him, him going and seeing his past is just one of those things that where it's just like, he's gone. He's gone. Just like with Dobie... Dobie and Severus Snape are absolutely my two main characters because there's the alt-right hero, there's his funny, cowardly friend, and then there's the girl that knows everything. The, that trio that you see in almost every YA, not always the same same genders or whatever, but that's always what... Always that that because uh, in Star Wars there's the optimistic hero, the the woman who knows everything, and the the guy who's well not a coward, just the the swashbuckling type. Yeah, that's Star Wars, which is why everything that's a YA is basically ripped off of Star Wars. I I will go to my grave saying that, even though Star Wars is a rip off of other things too, the classics. But it's just like Severus Snape is one of those characters that I absolutely wish we got more of as well, because they do introduce more of him in the books. Sorry, I keep repeating myself. <laughs> yeah, but him going is just like, again, Dobie and Severus Snape got me to choke up, got me to feel about it. When Dumbledore wouldn't, when Sirius Black didn't, because Sirius Black's death seemed like Harry's own stupidity that led to it. Yeah. And in Dumbledore's case, he kind of wished it to happen, and he's an elderly man. In Snape's case, he was literally doing what he was told to do, and he was basically tortured for it. In Dobie's case, he had a huge character arc coming back to the place of his enslavement to free his friends. And... Yeah, those are the ones that are just really stand out. 
because they were the ones who had the biggest struggle in the entire story. Everyone else literally had everything given to them or everything was on a silver platter. It's just like... I like the characters who struggle. I like the characters who actually have hardships. You can relate to them more and you feel sorry for them when they don't or when they when they do everything they meant to do the right way, but nobody sees it because they're doing it. Like Snape's case, he was seen as the villain by everybody because he was doing what was right, what was best for everyone. Ugh. Yeah, Harry's a horcrux. He has to have Voldemort kill him. Yeah. Dumbledore comes back in his vision at a train station. Uh, yeah. Neville Longbottom is also a chosen one, which they actually get to in the books. They don't actually reveal much here, but except for the one in the Order of the Phoenix where it was Neville who actually read Harry's name when it technically was supposed to be Harry who could only read his name. So it's one of those... They, they hint at it, but they don't actually say it like they did in the book and Harry didn't talk to uh, Dumbledore's poster at the end saying that he dropped the stone of uh, well raising the dead in the forest so it's lost forever um, yeah he's keeping the cloak and the wand I don't I don't think he broke the wand I think he just threw it because he didn't want it uh, yeah those are the those are the things that are just like yeah the little things here and there, but yeah, it's it's Snape, Doby. Those are the two takeaways from the the movies, the series. It's just like it's them. It's all about them. The other characters you could I could care less about, but it's Doby and Severus Snape that really do tug at the heartstrings. Mm, sadly, you don't get enough of Lupin and Tonks, and the fact that they don't really even mention that they have a child. They just say, oh. Uh, someone will talk to him about, tell us that we died for something. Or just like, you introduce this now. You introduce this now of all times that you just had a son. Really. After you're dead. That that really doesn't give us enough time to, to develop any kind of emotional reaction. It's just like, oh, whiplash. Okay, you had a son. That, the movies do it that way. Because she introduced she's pregnant at the wedding. All these little things are just like, okay. But it's a movie. It's a movie. i got to stop dwelling on the books. Thank you all for watching. Talk to you next time. Toodles.